Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today um, I'm sharing a project that I'm busy with for a swap in a local group. It's a swap of a friendship hand or a hand of friendship. Um, and it's literally your own hand traced and embellished to swap um, just as a, a gesture of kindness and um, f friends from afar and especially in the in the current situation of social distancing just to say that there are um, bridges between friends and between fellow crafters. So what I've done so far is I've cut out um, the hand. It's just from, I had some scrap um, cover board. So I've cut that out, nobbles and all. Um, once you trace your hand, you realize I've gessoed it, white gesso. Um, and then I had the thought that we are all, we are not one dimensional, we are all layered. So what I've done is I've cut some transparency um, also to size and I stamped with stays on and like a, it's a number basically what makes me tick um, the hand should uh, symbolize you and what you stand for and have a personal message for the receiver on the back so um, I'm paying some attention to that um, so that layers over that the white hand will still be embellished um, and then I thought, let me add another layer. This is a die cut, a Kaiser Craft die cut, and it's a paper, like a heavy foil. It's an Indian paper from Do Crafts. So this is like a, a Moorish pattern. Um, so I'm going to layer that over just to add some of the bling, uh, which is me. Um, and then I will split pin it I think so that the things you peel away to get to the the crux or the heart of the person um, and then I must just check how to actually embellish the hand so that the transparency lies somewhat flat so there can't be too much dimension so that's what we will do next um, I've taken some more steps in my hand of friendship uh, so this was uh, gessoed um, and then I painted with acrylic paint and with a stencil and a wet cloth um, I rubbed off some of the paint. The intention obviously was a rose stencil but having done it they look like eyes which I do like. Um, it reminds me of uh, the Indian Hamza's the hand and the eye. So I think that's also a nice bit of symbolic. I started off with my left hand which was this and I painted the wrong side. So just keep that in mind if you were intending to do a side of hand which side is the front. This is the stamped uh, layer that goes on top. That was the right way but now I've painted the wrong way. And then my third layer that I finished was this die cut. At first I thought I'd layer it that it looks like a ring um, but I think like a cuff would be better. So that's where we are now. I think I'm gonna still embellish or stitch along the side um, but at the same time I do want this to be able to move off. Um, so when you start layering embellishment it's tricky. I haven't quite wrapped my head around how to best get the effect. I'm still working on my hand. It's uh, late night so what I've done is I've heat embossed the thumb with a like a quite fine to symbolize uh, growth and also is it even something that I made if there's no heat embossing on it? I then stenciled some words. It's from a Tim Holtz stencil. I just used the little Versafine chalk um, dew drop. I, I used the actual ink pad to stencil. And that worked quite well. Um, handle with care. Also the play of hand and handle. Um, so now I'm this far. And then, um, so I mean, you don't, you can see the stuff, but you won't see it until you start peeling away the layers and then with the cuff. And then I had the feeling that something must be in the palm, not a lot. And then, I don't know if it's corny that you have the world 
in your hand. Um, whether that makes you sound of think of like childhood Sunday school songs. Um, so that's the one. And then I thought about time. And that's the other one with a split pin maybe that the clock can turn. But that clock seems a bit dull with that. And then um, I thought about the playing card, you know, ace up your sleeve and all of that with the crown because you know how much I like the, the symbol. But that's not right. And then I think the one I'm going to go for, it's a bit fat, is the heart. I like the pinks or the rose golds. Um, so I think that is going to be my end result. Um, and then this, I must just figure out, I think the cuff needs to be attached to the transparency so then that whole thing turns off and then you can start seeing the detail this is a chipboard sticker I think it's a prima one um, but I'm gonna again just peel back some of the cardboard to make it slightly flatter and then colors aren't quite right um, so I think I must just do just some highlights in the in this teal um, to bring in some of the colors and then I've got these tiniest tiny like, I don't even know if they're centimeter long little baby tassels which I mean, it's probably too much, but is there such a thing with me that I'm just going to bead something? But the beading needs to be where the transparency doesn't. So the construction, I must still just make sure. And then there's supposed to be a message at the back, but the back's not looking so great. So that needs another layer. But I don't want the paint to uh, go round to the front. So maybe just... decoupage some paper on okay so because this is quite shiny I'm just gonna key it with the sanding block just so that it takes the paint and then I'm gonna do like a glaze um, very very watery layer just to give it a shimmer of blue but not to take the colors away I hope it works if it doesn't I'm just gonna wipe it off quickly so I like that um, can you see that the gold or the uh, rose gold elements are still there? Um, it, so I did a very watery paint over the keyed surface and then I just wiped the whole lot off again. Like I almost buffed it until it got rid of... So it, it grunged it up a bit. So I think that's a much better yes because what I wanted was the foiling. Okay, cool. I'm going to try and tuck the heart sort of in the corner because I do like these rose things that look like eyes. I don't want to lose them completely. But a lot of the things, like even the stamping you see, but only if you really look, which, you know, also adds to the symbolism. And then I can start layering my next... It's going to have to be a split pin in order to have movement. Yes. I've just used my crocodile um, and I did a hole through all three of them so that is movable I'll trim that and then the whole thing so the layers also move um, independently of each other and then that's gonna just go there because obviously it's limited by Okay, that goes behind um, so I will undo the whole thing and then do the so that can move okay I am of course not sure if 
the vision is really you know, vision in the head versus what's actually happening but it looks okay don't know if, if all the shine and the glass and the various um, because there's foiling and then foiling and then the heat embossing but it's all on different layers whether that's actually translating onto camera so here we go um, I finished the hand uh, once I overlaid the transparency it looked very flat and you couldn't uh, it wasn't apparent that there were layers so I punched it's a heart um, just with a punch it was a bit tricky but it's uh, it's fine and the only way I could get the punch to fit um, it was sideways can you see that so and then I sewed a little um, charm and the mini tassel on that's the heart that I decided on. So I also like the whole heart heart um, bread. So that's the back. So I mean there is a bit of detail on the back now, um, but that's not too bad. And then when I did all of that, it still looked flat. So I gold leafed just along the edges of the fingers. So all in all, this little hand of friendship says a bit about me. Um, it's also colors and things that I like and these textures and as always um, some layering and discovery and also something tactile. So that is that. It was quite, uh, it was quite a nice exercise. At first I was a bit dubious as to the use. Um, but as a symbol and as a gesture, I quite like it. Alright, thanks for watching. Remember to comment and like and please subscribe if you haven't. Bye-bye.